So this is an English whiskey, but is it better than Scotch whiskey? Well, I'm Phil, and I'm gonna fill you in about the Cotswolds Odyssey Barley. Generally, when you're thinking a single malt, you're thinking of Scotch whiskey, or whiskey from Scotland. But more and more, this is becoming not the case. These days, you're getting whiskey from Australia, you're getting whiskey from India, and you're even getting single malt from New Zealand. And I'm a big fan of international single malts getting better and rising up. And it's not to say I'm not a fan of Scotch whiskey, I mean, obviously, I'm a fan of Scotch whiskey. But I think the better international single malt gets, the more pressure it puts on Scotch whiskey from being complacent. So I think it's a win-win for the consumer. And that's why I'm a huge fan of this English whiskey, the Cotswolds. Now, if you're from the UK, you pretty much know exactly where this whiskey must be from. It's from the Cotswolds. The Cotswolds are basically in the west part of England. It's a very romantic sort of countryside area, lots of little cute small towns. And in fact, it's where a lot of TV shows are shot. It's where a lot of films are shot. So they're a pretty young distillery that only started in 2014, but they had some great help when this distillery was starting up. So they had help from Harry Cockburn, who's a master distiller, who used to work from Bowmore, and they also had help from Dr. Jim Swan, who's a kind of expert in casks. So like a lot of young distilleries, the distillery also makes gin. And the reason for that is because with gin, when you make it, you can get it onto the market a lot sooner, start paying your bills. It's just better for the economics of running a distillery. Whereas whiskey, it takes a long time to make, you have to age in all the casks for several years, so it could be a long time before you start to see profit. But the gin itself has done really well, it's won quite a few awards. Even the young whiskey that's been coming out has also done quite well. In the online Scotch Whiskey Awards last year, it was nominated for the Best World Whiskey. And another really cool thing about this distillery is they source their own local barley, which totally makes sense because there's heaps of beer being made in the same area, so there's already lots of barley being harvested, because it adds its own unique identity to the whiskey, you know, a little bit like Kilhoman, Springbank, or Brudick Lady, who also source their own local barley. And the production's still pretty small, they do their own floor malting, so yeah, they put a lot of effort into these little details. So let's get on to the stats. And generally, new distilleries do pretty well with stats, they always come out strong, which is great to see. And the Cotswolds is no exception. So, this whiskey is bottled at 46%, <laughs> fantastic, tick of approval. It's also non-chill filtered or unchill filtered, and it's natural color. So now onto the cask and the age. So with this whiskey, we don't get a traditional age statement, but you can still figure out the age from the label. What you gotta do is you take the batch number, this is batch four from 2019, and minus that off the vintage. So this is a 2015 Odyssey Barley, and with that, we get a four-year-old. And also as well, we get some good cask information. So on this little tag thing, it talks about that this is aged in ex-bourbon and reconditioned red wine casks before being blended and bottled at the distillery. What I think that means is that they would have taken some whiskey from the distillate aged in ex-bourbon by itself and then separate whiskey aged in ex-wine casks and at the end, the master distiller will blend them together and kind of decide the sort of balance between those two casks that they want. Which is cool, it gives them heaps of control. So now onto the bottle design. I really like this design. I think it really leans into the Cotswolds kind of theme really well. It looks very English. You know, it sort of feels like other products you might get in the Cotswolds. Like, I don't know, if you went to some little shop and you're buying cheese or if you're buying soap or some sort of like woolen jumper. It's got a really nice classic English feel to it, but also with a nice modern twist. And it doesn't look too much like other Scotch whiskies, which is really nice. I like it. So I'm gonna give this bottle design a B plus. All right, enough talking about it. Let's get on to the tasting notes. Okay, so now onto the nose. So straight up front, you're getting heaps of fruit. Passion fruit, you're getting peaches. Um, in terms of the apple, it's kind of that toffee apple again, a little bit like the Aaron 10. It does kind of remind me of the direction Aaron 10 goes in. It's sort of real fruity, tropical kind of notes. There's sort of a background biscuity note as well, kind of digestive biscuits. It kind of reminds me a little bit of a Shrewsbury, which is this biscuit. Well, I think you call it a Dammy Dodgers in the UK. Um, 
where you kind of have this sort of strawberry syrupy thing in the middle. A little bit like that. And speaking of that, maybe like wine gums as well. What really amazes me about this is actually just how complex the nose is for a four year old. I mean, I was expecting a lot more new make, it to be a lot harsher, but it doesn't taste like a four year old. The fact that I'm comparing it to the Aaron 10 says some good stuff about this nose. And now onto the palette. Really nice oily mouthfeel. And it's got this great blend between sour and sweet. And it's kind of reminded me a little bit of a dry Riesling. You get a lot of the same fruits coming through, you get pineapple, you get some of that toffee apple again. And what I really like about this whiskey as well is it's very gentle, it's very fruity, and I feel like it fits the theme really well of where this whiskey is actually from, you know, the Cotswolds, that sort of romantic countryside. You know, it's not some sort of harsh Isla whiskey. Look, it's not like the best whiskey ever, but for a four year old, this is outstanding. And the finish. It's about a medium finish. For such a light and gentle whiskey though, that's pretty good. Um, normally these kind of light gentle whiskies often have quite short finishes but it's still there, I can still taste it. It's nice. So now let's get on to my overall thoughts about this whiskey. So first of all, the value. Now, in terms of value, I think it's fair. I mean, it's a four year old, which I normally would say is quite pricey, but it's pretty good whiskey. So it tastes great at the end of the day. It's, it's still a lot cheaper than some other newer distilleries like Bimba, which is also from England, which is nearly double the price of this one um, and much harder to get. So I wouldn't say it's cheap either. It's fair, it's fair value. Now onto availability. So the fact I got it in New Zealand is pretty good news because kind of new distilleries, I kind of assume the availability is going to be terrible because they won't have much stock. Um, but I managed to get one. It was available at a couple of different retailers in New Zealand. So that's a good sign. I'll be keen to know how available it is in your area. And now onto the reachability. So for this review, I didn't actually mean to be this far through the bottle uh, when I went to review it. I thought I'd just, you know, taste a little bit of it, but I was reaching for it quite a lot. Um, it is a very sweet kind of whiskey, that sort of marmalade, kind of like stewed apple and all those kind of nice fruity notes. So you've got to be in the mood for a lot of those sort of fruity notes. But I have been, it's been summer here and I've been reaching for this whiskey a lot. So that's a great sign, especially for a four year old. So who's this whiskey for? Well, the person I kind of imagine this whiskey would be great for is someone who's already quite into scotch or into kind of stereotypical bourbon and wants to try something a little bit different from a different country. You know, this kind of still fits the profile scotch quite well, but it's different enough to be a good talking factor. It's gonna be someone who already likes whiskey who wants to try something a little bit different down a slightly different path. So what are my final thoughts about this whiskey? Well, I am really impressed by this whiskey, especially for the age. In fact, I would already prefer this whiskey over a lot of the Scotch whiskey that I own. A lot of those kind of 40% sort of mundane kind of whiskies. This has come out so strong out of the gates at the age that it is. The fact that I'm already starting to compare this to the Aaron 10, I mean, they're still quite different. I mean, I find this more marmalade-y, I find this one a bit more the kind of toffee apple notes, but I feel like they're in the same area of those really nice fruity notes, which is such a good sign. Look, it's, it's not as good as the Aaron, obviously. I absolutely love the Aaron. But I can imagine the Cotswolds at a 10 year old or a 12 year old. I think it's really going to be a whiskey that other Scotch whiskey distilleries need to watch out for. And they may need to lift their game up more because the Cotswolds is doing amazing things already. I'm really impressed. Have you tried it? I think it's a really good English whiskey and I can't wait to try different expressions, new ages and anything else that they release. So what is my final score for this whiskey? Well, I think if I compared this to other whiskies that were around a four year old, this would score well into the 90s. But when I take all the other single malts into consideration, 
when I take the value into consideration, this whiskey is going to be an 88, which is amazing for how young this whiskey is. It's absolutely fantastic. I think as a whiskey enthusiast, this is a great time to be into whiskey with whiskies like this coming up through the ranks. But I'm keen to hear what you think. Um, have you tried this whiskey or have you tried any whiskies from new distilleries? If you have, leave a comment down below. I'm keen to hear from you. Also, hit the like button while you're there, hit the subscribe button and the bell. But thanks again to my patrons for making this review possible. If you want extra content, go over there, go over to Patreon. But above all, make sure you share and enjoy. Beauty. Oh,